Hi everybody, Mariana with Three Peaks Classroom. If I'm being completely honest, I've actually been putting off recording this YouTube episode because it's forcing me to face some big fears of mine and the number one fear that I have is a failure. Today I'm going to be restructuring and reorganizing my entire fictional classroom library and it's going to completely change the way that my students read to themselves in my classroom. So let me give you a little bit of background information before I dive in. I taught pre-kindergarten for six years before I decided to make the jump up to grade three. So that summer I spent scouring garage sales or secondhand stores or asking friends and family if I could get some books to build up my classroom library. I have an episode all about shopping for classroom library books on a bargain and I'll link it down below in case you're interested. When I set up my classroom library, I went to Ikea and I bought the green bins that you see behind me. And I was teaching grade three, or I was going to be teaching grade three. So I looked up what is the average or what is the level that students should be reading in grade three, according to Fountas and Pinnell, which is the reading system that we use in my division. And so I looked up and the reading level is uh, levels L to about level O. So I arranged my bins to reflect that spread in grade three. I have levels A, B, C, D and W, X, Y, Z on the ends of the spectrum and they are all combined into a bucket. And then as you get closer to where the kids should be in grade three, each bucket has its own. So I have level M. I have mysteriously um, lost my level N bin. I am home on mat leave right now, so I'm sure it's somewhere tucked away in my storage. But I have level M here, I have level O. And so as you can see, as they get um, towards the middle, the bins get smaller in um, selection. So I've been using this system while I taught in grade three and the last year before I went on mat leave, I uh, used it in grade four as well. And if I'm being completely honest, it's a system that worked for me because it made sense to me. Oh, Johnny, you're reading at a level K? No problem. Why don't you look in the bin that's marked J and K and you could read any books in there because that is the best fit for you, Johnny. That made sense to me. But of course, the whole time I was using this system, I would hear rumblings or whispers from administrators or other teachers or people on Facebook groups kind of cautioning me that this system is not conducive to a healthy reading environment. Those rumblings kept pestering me, reminding me that this isn't really the best way to organize my classroom library because it sometimes would lead to students feeling uncomfortable about the level that they are at reading. I tried combating that issue by having a discussion at the beginning of the year and reminder discussions throughout the year reminding students that we are we shouldn't expect everybody to be at the same reading level because you know somebody coming into the classroom that's learning how to speak English you wouldn't expect them to be right off the bat at level Z you would expect them to be learning English and so they might be like at a, at a different level that you might be at and so I justified having my leveled bins by telling myself that I would have these conversations with my students it was a system that was working for me but it was not a system that was working for my students and this is what is so hard for me to admit. I was cruising Instagram one day and I came across a quote that really struck a chord with me and it made me decide to completely change the way that I'm doing my classroom bins. And that quote said, no one ever got excited about reading from a bin. And then when I read that, that was kind of like the final straw that broke the camel's back and it made me realize, yeah, it's time that I need to change what I'm doing in my classroom. So although the leveled bin system works in terms of organization and management, hey, congratulations, you've leveled up to a level M book now. You get to go rifle through and look through the level M books. It was time to finally admit all of the problems that have arisen or that had arisen in my classroom from using a system like this. Also, I just want to insert a little caveat here that if you also are using a leveled bin system in your classroom, it's okay. I used it for six years and I did. I have students that have had seen success because we had the level bins and they knew that these books, it took the guesswork out for them. They knew that if I go to this bin or around this bin, these books are going to be the most appropriate for me in terms of reading ability. So if you use a leveled bin system in your class, just know that I'm here to cheer you on, but I'm also here to 
have you think about, is that the best system for your students? I just want to share some problems that I noticed that were creeping up in my own personal classroom while I was using a leveled bin system. Despite my conversation at the beginning of the year of everybody being at different reading levels, I still saw students who were embarrassed to be going through their particular uh, leveled bin looking for books. They were embarrassed because they were not the same level as their friends, for example. Another big issue that I saw in my classroom quite often actually was that some students were not excited about reading the books that were in their bin. You know, they would come up to me and say, oh, you know, teacher, when do I get to read the Pokemon book that's in level P and, you know, I'm a level K and it was really discouraging for me that to, to tell them like, well, that's not just the right book for you. You know, you can look at it, you can, you can have it in your hands and you can bring it to your desk, but in terms of actually developing your reading abilities, it's just not the right book for you. And I was the one telling them that. And, you know, there was a little voice inside of my head telling me, that's not what I want to be telling my students. He's excited about reading a Pokemon book. I should say, yeah, here, grab it, go for it. Another problem was that students would only read uh, to somebody in Daily Five if it was a person that was a similar level to them because then they had similar books. Finally, some students that didn't pass their reading tests, it just meant that they weren't able to read the other books in the bins. So a few problems with this leveled bin system in my classroom. And gosh, it's really painful to admit all of these on camera because this is something that I've been avoiding for a very long time, admitting these mistakes that I had in my classroom, admitting these problems that I had. It feels really painful. With all of that being said, I finally sat down and I thought about how do I want to set up my students for success in life, not just in my classroom, but for life. When I go to look for a book at chapters or at the library, what's the first thing I do? Well, the first thing I do is I either go to a genre that I enjoy or I go to trusted authors that I know I've enjoyed in the past and maybe I want to look at another book of theirs in their series. So those are the first two places that I will go and look. And that's exactly what I want my students to do in the classroom. I want them to come to my classroom library and I want them to get excited about reading. And I want to, them to go to a book, an author, or a genre that they know that they've enjoyed in the past. So when I go look for a book and I find my favorite author, I'll look to see what other books do they have in their series and I'll grab one. And what's the first thing that you do? You open the book and you read a few lines and you decide right then and there, hey, does this book excite me? Do I want to read this book? Does it make sense to me? Am I understanding what I'm reading? Um, no, I'm not really crazy about this topic. I'm gonna put it back. That's exactly the kind of skill that I want my students to have in the classroom, which is the main reason why I'm changing my classroom library and I'm going to be taking all of my books out of their bins and I'm going to be reorganizing everything. After watching a fellow YouTuber, her name is Molly Malloy, she completely reorganized her classroom library as well. She also had bins, but she didn't like the way that they were organized. And so she took all of the books out and put them spines facing out and she reorganized her classroom library according to author and I love that idea. So Molly has her fictional classroom library organized by author and let me show you the labels that she uses because I just had these printed. She has her entire classroom library organized by the author's last name and when you have them all set up, it is visually so stunning to see in the classroom because it looks like a rainbow. So those are the fictional books. She also has nonfiction books organized by the Dewey Decimal System. And if I'm being completely honest and I'm talking about failures, um, <laughs> I had no idea the Dewey Decimal System was even about library organization. Thought it was about math. <laughs> Molly Malloy has a a reference page for all of her nonfiction books and they are color coordinated but they're also coordinated by icons and so if a student really wants to read a book about fossils and dinosaurs for example they could go look for the labels that have an orange and a dinosaur on them and so I'm going to be completely reorganizing my nonfiction books as well and I am planning to keep my fictional books on one library and my nonfiction books on the other library um, and that way students can decide what books they want to read based on the two different libraries. Now I'm going to take my fictional labels that I have uh, printed 
and I'm going to take all of my library books out of these bins and I am going to wrap one of these labels around every single book of mine and I'm going to reorganize my classroom library. Okay, so just for the sake of time, I have been doing this for the last like 10 minutes. I just wanted to show you what the library is going to look like eventually. So all of the spines are facing forward and you can see the beautiful rainbow of author letters here shown to students. So if you can imagine, if I zoom out, this entire bookshelf will be covered with books facing the kids and they'll get to peruse. They'll get to look through here and say, oh, you know, this looks like a good book or, oh, wow, there's a whole series here on Captain Awesome. I would love to look at that. So um, as you can imagine, this whole bookshelf and bins full of books is going to take me a while. Uh, this is the current state that I'm at right now. <laughs> Tons of labels all over the floor. So yeah, I'm just going to continue on organizing all my books and hopefully when I'm finished, uh, I can share a picture on Instagram of my entire bookshelf organized in this beautiful library system. Thank you so much for watching this episode. As you can imagine, it was quite personal and it was quite hard for me to film. And um, I got kind of vulnerable admitting my uh, failures, I guess. Um, I shouldn't say failures because for six years, it was a system that worked for me and it was something in my classroom to get my kids going for reading. But now that I know better, I want to do better and I want I want to do this. I want to have my classroom visually, aesthetically pleasing and I want my students to get excited about reading and I want to teach them the skills that they're going to need in their life. So again, thank you very much for being here. Thank you for watching this episode. Um, I would love to hear your thoughts on my process and my journey to get here. I would love to know how you organize your classroom library. I would love to know if you are also in my camp where you're kind of thinking about maybe you want to switch the way that you're doing things. Please leave me a comment down below. I love hearing from you guys and I will respond to every single comment. So thank you so much. Don't forget to hit subscribe so that you can stay uh, on my channel and you can follow me along on my journey as I talk about all things to do with uh, classrooms in Canada. I do have a series going to be coming out soon. I'm going to be traveling to different parts of Alberta to film your classrooms. Um, I'm really excited about that. That series is called Classrooms Across Alberta. I'm going to be visiting a grade seven classroom. I'm going to be visiting a kindergarten classroom, a grade one classroom, you know, rural classrooms and uh, urban classrooms. I'm just, I'm super excited about that series. So don't forget to subscribe so you can stay along for the journey. I hope you guys are having a great day and I will see you in the next episode. Bye.